Okay, so today I'm going to be going over um, lathe C and Y axis tutorial one. So let's go ahead and get started. And this is from the handout, by the way. This is from the handout. Um, okay, so first let me just slide that over a little bit, give myself some more graphic space. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, of course, as always, select my lathe and I'm going to come down and I'm going to select my plane click my DZ plane and work off my DZ. All right, so everything looks good there. Okay, so this part, um, if I bring this up, I can kind of show you what this thing looks like. So let's drag this over. All right, so here is what it's supposed to look like in the end. Um, here is our actual drawing. Um, so what I'm going to start out with, we have some features we need to draw on the right end, or the right um, plane, but we're going to wait, we're going to do them last. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our profile here, and then we're going to come back and we're going to go to the right side plane, and we're going to add this hexagon, and we're going to add this here sprocket, or um, kind of like a cam shape to it. Uh, so let's go ahead and start like we normally do with a line, multi-line, and I'm gonna start at zero comma zero, enter. Uh, it looks like we're going to one inch, 1.0 comma comma zero. Oops. 1.0 comma zero, enter. Um, and then we're going to 1.0 comma negative 0.5, enter. And then we're going to 1.5 comma, uh, negative 0.5 enter 1.5 comma negative 1 enter and then we're going up to it looks like 2.0 comma negative 1.0 enter and 2.0 comma negative 1.5 enter and then down to 1.0 comma negative 1.5 enter, 1.0 comma negative 3.0 enter. So that was an easy one. All of our dimensions were very easy. They were, they were laid out the way that we actually draw this or the way that I prefer to draw this. So that was nice and easy. So we're going to go ahead and hit escape. Um, so there we go. We have our outer profile. So this is going to be our turned profile. And it's going to get us close to essentially where... Uh, the outside of our uh, milled features are. Um, and one of the things I would generally do, I would actually look at this. If I were making this part, really making this part in the lathe, um, I would take, I would check this here diameter, this two inch diameter. So basically what I have is a 1.825 from center of circle to center of circle. And what I need to know is the radius from the center of that to the outside. And I, I'm given that radius right here. So what I want to do is take that and I'm going to multiply that times 2. Let me bring my calculator up. I don't think I have a calculator on this computer, so I have to do it off screen, unfortunately. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, 0 0.0875. I'm going to multiply that times 2, and then I'm going to add that to 1.825. And that gives me 2 inches exactly. Uh, if I am turning <clears throat> a profile for this, chances are I probably don't want to be exactly at 2 inches, especially if this is going to finish at 2 inches. So let's go back in there. Um, actually, let me bring that back up. Slide it over here. Uh, let's go back in there and let's raise these up a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I'm going to go ahead and change that diameter. So this one here says, says it's going to 1.5. I'm going to add an extra 10 per size. I'm going to go 1.52 uh, for that hex. So one point. 5.2 comma, um, and that's negative 
0.5, and then we go 1.552, comma, negative 1.0, and this one here is going to be 2 inches, so we go 2.02, .02, comma, negative 1.0, and 2.02 comma negative 1.5 and then I'm going to connect this. So hopefully you kind of understand what I did there. Basically I added a little stock on these diameters so that that end mill is cutting material all the way around when we go and we, we cut that profile on there. Um, we're obviously going to rough this in with our turning tool but that's just it. We don't want to turn that to the exact diameter that we're finishing at for the largest part here. So from this measurement over these two points is exactly two inches. Well, if I'm a thou undersized, I'm going to have a little flat there, or just kind of a little, it wouldn't be a flat, but it would be like a little imperfection. I want that end mill to cut all the way around. So I'm making that just a little bit bigger. Uh, it's kind of poor that, um, well, I guess they're, they're, this is the drawing, so I'm not sure if they have you draw it like that in the tutorial or not, but that's how I would do it. Uh, so, uh, with that, we can go ahead and start drawing our face profiles. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to put this on a different level. Um, I'm going to name this level Turn Profile. And this is just so I can toggle between them if I, I need to turn one off because it's you know, the geometry is getting in the way or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, so I'm going to call this face face pro, oops, not profiles, profiles. Um, yeah, and I'm going to for that I'm just going to include that drilled uh, location in there as well. So. So we're going to work on this plane now, and plane's okay. All I'm going to do is just hit right and go to the right side, and we're going to start out with this hex. So this hex, oh, and by the way, it shows you a different uh, UCS down here. We are technically still going to enter things the way we would if we were in the DZ plane. So it would be, it's, we're still going to enter them X, Y, Z. Okay? So just keep that in mind um, when we enter our coordinates, I mean. All right, so we need to put a hex on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose our polygon and six sides. That sounds good because that is a hexagon. Um, the radius, the radius of this is 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and Let's, uh, we're going over the corner or the flat, and this one shows it going over the corner. So we are going to create this at zero, comma, zero, comma. Oop, my fast point's not working. By the way, if your fast point ever doesn't work, uh, right up here is, let me escape. Um, right up here is the button for that. So I'm just going to click that, and I'm going to enter my fast points, which is 0, comma, 0. And then in my Z, I want this thing to be, it looks like I want it to be at negative 0.5. So I'm going to make it negative 0.5. Enter. All right, so now, oh, didn't lock my radius in. Uh, what was that? 0.75. Enter. All right, so now the orientation, uh, does that look correct? No, that orientation is not correct. Because you have to remember, uh, I'm looking at it like this. That orientation would not be correct when I'm looking at my face. So I need to rotate that 60 degrees. Um, actually, 30 degrees, sorry. There we go. 30 degrees. So that looks correct to the way my part is. So you got to make sure you do that. Make sure that these the orientation of these things are correct. Um, so I'm going to hit check. That looks good. And I'm happy with that. You can see my Z value is correct. It's in the correct spot. Uh, now, obviously, this does not meet that diameter. But you have to think this is round. Um, 
this point will be a little bit below that diameter. So this is correct. Should look like this. All right, next face pass or next face profile. Uh, we are going to put in a circle. So when I look at this, this drawing, what I'm looking at here is I'm, I'm looking at basically this arc, these arcs on the outside as just circles. Um, and it says that it's 1.825 across center to center. So basically if I cut that in half, that's going to give me my X location for my circles. Um, so let's go ahead and put those in there. All right, so my circle, enter center point. Okay, so my X is going to be 1.825 divided by two, comma. Uh, my Y is gonna be zero because I don't, basically if I'm looking at it, this is my X value. My Y value would be like this. I only wanna go in one of these. I only wanna move in one of these. I could put that in the Y and just leave x0 too. Doesn't really matter which way I draw it, um, but I'm gonna choose to use my x. So I'm gonna make that zero comma, and then my z is going to be at a negative 1.0. So I'm gonna go to negative 1.0, enter. Uh, enter my radius. Oh, one tangent. Uh, enter my radius. Yeah, so if I could, if this is locked out, it's because you're probably on tangent. And my radius is 0 0.0875, enter, and hit check. Okay, so that looks pretty good, right? So there's my extra 10 thousandths above the part. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate this thing. So we're going to go to transform, uh, whoops, rotate, select my circle, and I need eight of these. I'm going to do a total sweep which means it's going to equally divide how many ever my number is. So in this case, I'm going to do eight instances, and it's going to divide them equally around 360 degrees. Now, when you do this, um, it's counting. It's, it's not counting your first one, but I still need to divide it by eight. So I'm going to have to go back and delete. It's going to, it's going to basically draw a circle over top of this one. So I just have to go back and delete that one. The way around that would be as if I did an angle between and I just figured out what the angle is. I don't even feel like doing the math. It's just as easy to do this. So if I just do 8, 360, total sweep, and I'm going to hit check, and that's exactly what I want. Um, so there we go. So I hit escape out of there, and I'm just going to delete this extra one. And there we go. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, now I need to connect these with a one inch fillet between the two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to wireframe. I'm gonna go to my arc tangent because these are tangent to these circles. Um, so I'm gonna go arc two entities. So you drop down arc two entities. My radius is one inch. Select my two arcs. And it's going to give me all the possibilities that it can draw an arc tangent between these two. Um, obviously, this is the one I want, so I'm going to select it and hit check. And there we go. Uh, next, I am just going to rotate this as well. So I'm going to rotate this around. Um, exact same settings. So I'm just going to hit check and end selection. And then I'm just going to go back and delete this extra one that I created. And there we go. Now all I need to do is go ahead and divide and delete these, trim them. So I'm going to trim, 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 and, and there we go. And that should give me my profile. So there we go. That's exactly how it should look. Okay, so next uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to draw my circles or my holes for my circles. Um, let's see, to do that, I'm just going to hit circle and I snap to the center of one of these. And it looks like my circles or my holes are an eighth inch diameter. So let's go ahead and put 0.125 in there. 
hit enter, check that, and let's rotate those around just like we did with everything else for that profile. Rotate, check, delete the extra hole, and there we go. All right, so we have everything done on our face. Now all we need to do is add that point. So to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our DZ plane. I think I'm on it still. Okay, yeah, so I did. All right, so with our DZ plane. Now, uh, just a heads up, this tutorial that you're doing, if, you're follow, if you followed along in the book, it had you draw everything on the top plane. Didn't have you use the DZ plane for anything. So that is a big difference with where this is located, this hole. Uh, the dimensions here, I'm gonna change them around a bit because they are not actually locating the correct point if I'm using the DZ plane. Uh, so this point is supposed to be at negative 0.75 in the Z and it is supposed to be at 0.649 in the, we'll say in the X, but I need to double that because I'm working in diameter. So I have to kind of figure out, basically I'm transposing those two, uh, and then I'm doubling the Z value, or in this case the X value. So what I'm going to do here, I'll just bring that up real quick, so this point here, if I were to put this in in the X, now I know that this is actually supposed to be X.75 we're looking, it's supposed to be really a Z.75 because I can tell it's right in the center of this 0.5 and this one inch. Um, if it were supposed to be a Z.649, it would be a lot closer to this half inch, but I can see that it's basically directly right in the center there. So they're working off the regular WCS. I'm working off DZ, so I have to change these numbers so that it's put in the correct place. All right, so what I'm going to do, I just need to double this number because this is supposed to be a diameter number if I'm working in the DZ. But this is actually just a radius number. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit my point. Um, I am going to go to 0.64. 95 times 2 comma uh, 0 comma uh, negative 0.75 enter and right there I get my point and if I look at this from the right side notice that that point is right on the edge of this so that is perfect so there is my drilled hole now I know it shows the drilled hole in the front here, but um, the crazy part is this here, we have a right side view below. We have a right side view below, and imagine if that point were right here. It would be in the middle of this, this diamond, it would be right here, it would be where the flat it would be. So this, this drawing is not correct, is my point. Um, it's, it's actually pretty poor that, that this, this is like this in a tutorial, uh, but it is. So needless to say, I worked around it. I noticed it and I'm going to make the part correctly. Um, uh, and the reason I know that is because, uh, well, obviously I'm not drilling through the point of it. Also, you can't really see it in here, but this solid shows what it's actually supposed to look like and the hole is going through the flat on the top. So let's go ahead and go back to our drawing. All right, I'm gonna hit check, and it looks like we have everything drawn that we need. Okay, so we can start machining this thing. So let's go ahead and start our tool paths. I'm gonna go to turning. First, I'm gonna go to top, and I am going to rough this part. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is face it. Oh, helps if we step the stock up first. Uh, yes. Actually, no, I don't want to keep that. Let's delete that. Yep. All right, let's go set our stock up before we do anything. All right, so stock set up. We're going to be working off the DZ plane. Check. 
and we are going to work at a length of 3.0, oops, 3.0. Our OD, our max OD is gonna be, let's say we're making this out of 2.5 stock, and we're gonna use our margins. Our right margin will be 0 0.01. Our left margin, we always want about two inches to hold on to, so we're gonna add an extra two inches for that. And hit check. And one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on my assigned tool number sequentially. Um, as you can see, I'm on my office computer, so I don't have my operation default set up yet. Uh, I'll probably do that after I do this tutorial, so you'll see those just all be automatically defaulted to. Uh, this is aluminum, so I'm gonna select the material. 6061, okay, and hit check. All right, so everything looks good there. Uh, I am ready to face this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit face, select my tool. This should be 3000 for a max speed. This should be 900, oops, not 9000. And I usually face at about 0 0.006. Um, all these facing parameters are okay. Again, I leave this on computer when I'm simulating and doing these tutorials, but uh, this should probably be on control when you go out to the machine. Um, okay, so everything looks good there. I'm gonna hit check, and there's our face. Uh, next, I am going to go ahead and do my roughing. So I'm gonna do a canned rough like I prefer, and we're going to pick a partial pick here, here. Uh, I cannot pick this whole thing the whole way back. I guess I could, actually. Check that. Um, let's go ahead and pick that and show you. So go ahead and pick that. Check. And I'm going to pick this tool. And we're going to do a max spindle speed of 3,000. Spindle speed of 200. Uh, we're gonna make that 900 like it's supposed to be. Uh, 10 thousandths is fine for a feed rate. Uh, depth of cut, 0.1 looks good. Stock to leave. So in the Z, we're gonna leave 5 thousandths. And computer conversation, we're gonna keep it on computer, again, just for these simulations. Uh, lead in, lead out. Uh, we're gonna go in here, and we're not going to extend the lead in contour, but we are gonna extend the lead out contour. And we're gonna extend that for our cutoff, point, point 0.15, and hit check. Um, our clearance, I'm gonna actually make this 0 0.01 in the Z, and we're gonna make this 0 0.1 in the or sorry, 0 0.01 in the X, 0 0.1 in the Z. Uh, no plunge parameters here. We don't wanna plunge. So it's just gonna cut this thing straight back. It's not gonna try and plunge into here. Um, hit check. And there we go. So it's doing exactly what I want it to do. Um, that looks fantastic. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with the finish. Uh, I'm gonna use the same tool to finish. I'm gonna groove this out, by the way. This is gonna be grooved out. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the same tool. And I realized that the tutorial probably has you plunging to do this. Uh, I'd rather just groove it out much easier. It's gonna give you a better product at the end of the day. Um, 900, 3000, and we're gonna make this 0 0.008. Um, everything there looks good. I hit check. And there is our finish. Okay. Uh, next. The next thing I'm going to do. Oh, one thing I wanted to do in here. Um, sorry. Let me, let me actually, you know what? No, there, that's okay. Everything there is okay. All right, so yeah, I'm good. Sorry, I thought I forgot something there. Uh, okay, so that looks good. Uh, now, before I groove that out, I'm going to mill this stuff. Uh, why am I gonna mill this stuff? Because I want this to be as rigid as possible. So I'm not gonna groove this down to a diamond and be cutting way out here on the end of the stock. So the groove's gonna come later. So we're gonna go ahead and start milling uh, this front side here. 
So I'm going to start out with this hex. Now, to do this, we're going to go to our C-axis paths, and we're going to use a face contour. So I'm going to go ahead and pick face contour. Uh, I'm going to pick a chain, and I'm just going to chain this. Now, I'm going to think about which way this should be going so that I am climb milling. Uh, so it's climb milling this direction. Uh, sometimes you don't want to climb mill in these, uh, these live tooling lathes. It, uh, just the way the connection works, it tends to give you a worse finish. Sometimes you're better off uh, conventional milling. But for this, this operation, I'm going to climb. I'm going to assume that we're using a BMT turret and we don't have any slop in the live tooling connection. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit check. We got our tool. Uh, we're going to cut this with a half inch tool. So I'm going to cut this with a. Oh, looks like I'm in drills right now. Here we go. Let me filter this. None end mill. All right, it's going to go half inch flat end mill. Uh, feed rate. So spindle speed, let's make that 5,000. I think that is the max that our BMT turret can go. And the feed rate, we're going to make that at, let's make that about 20 inches a minute. I have to go a little bit slower here on these. Our plunge rate, let's make that 10.0. Usually we go about 50% of our feed rate. Rapid retract looks good. And let's go ahead and do compensation type wear. And stock to leave on walls. Everything looks good there. It's 2D contour. Uh, roll around corner sharp. Let's go all, roll around all corners. And everything there looks pretty good. Compensation directions off to the right. I think we're actually gonna be off to the left there. Let me change that. I can always change it back if I'm wrong. Uh, depth cuts. We're gonna cut this all at once. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn in a lead or turn on the lead in. Uh, I'm gonna overlap a little bit, and everything there looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna make this 25 percent. 25. Multi pass. We are going to do a multi pass here. So I am going to do two rough passes, spacing of 0.1. And I'm going to do one finish pass at a spacing of 0 0.005. And that looks good. Linking parameters. We are going to clear at... We're actually going to do a retract at 0 0.1, incremental from where we're at. Uh, feed plane. Actually, I'm going to make this absolute, I believe. Yeah, we're going to make that absolute. Feed plane, we're going to make 0.1 incremental from where our geometry is. The top of stock, uh, incremental, zero from where the geometry is. And our depth, I'm going to make incremental from where the geometry is. So it looks like that hex is a half inch deep because it starts at 0.5 and it ends at 1 inch. So I'm going to go a negative 0.5. And that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit check. And you can see there is our path. All right, let's run that. That looks awesome. So there we are, there is our hex. And next thing we can do is this profile. We're going to do the same thing. Exactly what we just did. I'm going to turn that tool path off so I can see what I'm doing. So we're going to do face pass and I'm going to pick again. I want to, I'm going to climb mill again on this. Uh, basically it's up to you to figure out if you want to climb mill or not. If you run apart in the lathe and you, you're getting some kind of a ratty finish. Um, you shouldn't because I'm taking a 5,000 finish pass. So it should be fine with that. Uh, but if you're getting problems, you can always try conventional milling and see if it works a little better. Uh, so I'm going to hit uh, reverse and I'm going to climb mill this, hit check, tool, same tool, looks good, all my settings are good, wear is still on, depth cuts. 
Uh, so for this one here, looks good. Multi passes. I'm actually going to do three multi passes on this because I think there's a little bit more to take off here. Keep my finish pass the same. It is going to be negative 0.5. All these numbers still hold true because remember, it's all incremental with the exception of my retract plane. They're all incremental from where the geometry is at. Uh, now, this one, the depth, this is a 0.5 distance. I'm going to go a little past that because I can. There's no reason not to. I'm cutting away that material anyway. So I don't want to end up with like a foil edge on the back of here because I didn't go deep enough. So I'm going to take this an extra, heck, I might as well go 50,000 deeper because I'm cutting it away. It doesn't matter. Um, so all that looks good. Hit check. And let's regenerate all that. And let's play it. See here, cuts that. Well, looks like I don't need that first cut. So I can get rid of that. Second cut is good. And there's my finish. And that looks great. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna adjust that. So I'm gonna take away that multi-pass cut because I don't. there's no reason to just cut air. So I'll make that two. So two was good for that. I thought it was cutting a little more off, but I guess not. Okay. So there we go. Uh, now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna drill these holes, and these are gonna be face drills. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit face drill, and I'm just gonna select these holes. When you're selecting these, by the way, turn your depth filters off, and you don't want to select one of the quadrants. So if it's snapping to a quadrant, it's gonna drill that hole at the quadrant. What you really want is you want to just have it select the circle, not snapping to some point on the circle. Otherwise, you're going to get those. The other thing you could do is you could do a mask on arc and just select one circle and then window and you'd get all your circles really easy. Whoop! right there, you can see I did it. Um, yeah, so my U doesn't work. My unselect doesn't work. So as soon as you screw that up, I don't have the ability to unselect this. So I'm gonna hit escape, and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna set all my parameters and I'm gonna redo my geometry. Okay, so for this, I'm gonna assume I'm using a split point drill, and I'm gonna go into my tool library, and this is an eighth inch drill somewhere here. Should have an eighth inch. That's a quarter. There it is. Eighth inch drill. Uh, feed rate. Uh, let's take this at 8.0. Oh, 8.0. Uh, spindle speed's fine. Feed per tooth's good. Okay, so let's uh, peck drill this. And let's just make it a peck of 0.2 each time. Linking parameters, we are going to go a negative 0.5. So you can either add a breakthrough in here or you can calculate it. Um, this one here, this will calculate it for you. So add to depth, sure, add that to depth. Uh, I always like to go extra. I usually just, I'll just go negative 0.55 just to make sure it goes through. There's no harm in going a little bit deeper here. It's, again, you're milling it away, or you're turning it away anyway later. Uh, so that's how I like to do it. Um, clearance plane, I'm going to turn that off, and the retract plane, we're going to leave that at 0.1 incremental. And we're going to go to tip comp, it's fine. Everything here looks good, and I'm going to hit check. Okay. Now, my geometry points are wrong, so I need to go back in and I'm going to delete these things. So I could just delete that one and I can add a new one. There we go. Check. And let's regen that. And let's play it. Looks good. Taking my finish pass, drills my holes. So everything there looks great. 
Uh, last, I'm going to do this cross drill. And right here is my point. So I'm going to select my point. Now, remember, I have to mill this hex before I do that cross drill because that cross drill is basically on the flat of that hex, meaning that's this material needs to get milled away first. So uh, to do this, last time we have done C-axis drill. This time we're going to do cross drill. Um, cross drill, basically, we use when we're kind of going through center. So I'm going to go past the center or through the Z-axis the whole way through the part. So I'm going to go ahead and use that, select my cross drill point, and go ahead and hit check my tool. And I think that is supposed to be, I believe that's all supposed, supposed to be an eight inch um, drill as well. And it is a 5.0 feed rate. Uh, we actually probably take that 8.0. Cut parameters, drill counter bore. We're going to definitely peck this because we're going to go an inch and a half through this thing. So we're going to make this 0.1. I'm actually going to make it 0 0.05 through there. Um, we don't have a IJK cycle available on here. Um, it's just the post doesn't have it available. So we could edit the post and actually add that in. But uh, that's a different lesson for a different time. So we're just going to have to suffer through the queue and just taking a lot of extra pecs. Um, linking parameters. Okay, so for this... I'm going to turn the clearance off. We're going to go incrementally 0.1 above. Uh, top of stock It's going to be incremental 0 from where the point is. And our depth is going to be negative 1 point. And again, I'm going to add 5.5, 5, 50 thousandths for my tip comp. And I just do that. Again, I do that because I would rather just add that as a little more than I need than calculate it exactly and then have an issue with it not quite going the whole way through. Um, okay. Everything there looks good. So that should have created our path. Turn these all on. Let's see what we've got there. Actually, didn't turn that one on. OK, looks good. That is a win. Okay, so, uh, we'll and X out of there. Uh, I'm gonna turn this on, Alt T, there we go. Now you can see it. Uh, sometimes these things are a little bit goofy with, uh, you know, what it turns on and what it doesn't turn on. Okay, so now, we are ready to groove out this back side. I'm going to go to top and we're going to go ahead and we're going to groove. Oops, cutoff is not what I want. I want to groove. Let me escape first. No, I don't want to keep it. Groove. All right. All right, so for this, we are going to select two points. We're going to give this a go. So let's hit check. And. There is the part that I'm grooving out. Hit enter. And I'm going to pick my grooving tool. Now this may be a little deep. I may have to alter this grooving tool to give myself more clearance here. We'll see. Um, spindle speed's 3,000. And our surface footage is going to be about 600. Groove shape, all this stuff. So I'm going to use a stock as the outer boundary. Uh, it will finish this, which is going to make it really nice. And everything in there looks good as well. All right, so there is our groove. So all of that is grooved out. Let's take a look and see how that looks. Turn this up a little bit. There we go. Uh, it looks like my grooving tool was okay. I had enough clearance. It didn't, didn't nick the corners of this at all. So there was enough to uh, get this finished. All right. So 
that looks good. Now I'm just gonna cut this thing off. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit check. And let's go ahead and do our cutoff. And my boundary is right there. I'm gonna pick this tool. 3000 is our spindle speed max and 600 is our constant surface speed. Okay, this is a key spot where I'm gonna pick from stock because right here's where it's actually, I'm telling it it needs to start cutting off, but my stock is way up here currently. So that could cause a problem. So what I'm gonna do is hit from stock, from stock, and we're also gonna add a chamfer, and we're gonna put a little, maybe 10 thousandths, oops, not 100, 10 thousandths chamfer. Uh, hit check, and we want to put in a clearance cut from stock, and we're going to make it zero and Z, and hit check. And let's see what that does for us. So, that should put a little chamfer on there. I know it looks kind of goofy, but that's just because that's where our stock is, so it's going to start up there and put that chamfer so that it gets a ten thousandths on the back side of here. Um, okay. So, let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and give that a shot. See if we run into any issues there with that cutoff. May have to tweak some stuff. Got a nice little chamfer. Everything there looks good. So that looks fantastic. Uh, that is essentially it. Um, a chamfer, everything on the back side looked good. Now, if we wanted to add a chamfer to all of these faces, which generally I would, uh, you can use the same path. So I would just be using the same path, and I would just use a, um, a chamfer mill to follow around those. And if you see what I mean here, let me just kind of show you quickly. Uh, face contour. So when in one of these contours, if I go into cut parameters, I can do a 2D chamfer with this as well. And it'll give me those options again. So uh, really easy to put chamfers on here. Now, obviously putting a chamfer on the backside would be a little bit more difficult. You would need a special tool that allows you to reach the backside. Um, but for now, let's just say you want to put it on the front side. Uh, no problem. You have all the ability to do that, um, including this hex. So um, that's basically it. If uh, you know, if you have any questions, obviously you can see me during my office hours, or of course you can ask them during class. Uh, that's all for this lesson.